Hello, I'm T4. We both know why you're here, so let's just jump into it. In this video, I'm going to discuss what I've learned about logic and how I used it to make the automatic smelter you see in front of you. First, let's quickly run down all the pieces. So you have your math logic. So add A to B. You add your subtraction. Subtract A from B. And then you have your equals to and your equals to or greater than. You have your switch, your button, and your repeater. You have your number pad, you have your connectors, you have your hooks, the flipper, diode, and you have your flipper. Then you have your delays, you have a 10 second delay and a one second delay. You have your light, you have a display, and you have a magnet. You have a destroyer, you have the auto smelter, and then you have the gem compressor. You also have a valve, you have a spanner hurler, you have a durability reader, you have a weight reader, and then you have an item counter. Now all that being said, here's what I've actually learned about all the logic pieces. First, these group of machines, are they getting a one or are they getting a zero? These two pieces right here always put out a signal. When you hook something up to them and they make the comparison, whether it's an equals to or a greater than, the answer will put out a zero or a one. Meaning your machines are always receiving a signal but they will only turn on when they receive a one these two just do math they take a signal from a counter or from a number pad and then it either a is subtracted from b or a is added to b and then the new number is sent out these are pretty obvious they just continue the signal uh most hooks that I was playing with um, only go on the straight piece, so keep that in mind for your designs. The repeater, when it sends out its signal, sends out a one or a zero, and it just alternates. It, it's just a number pad. You just put in whatever you wanna put in, hit enter, and then those numbers get sent through the system. For the switch, lever down it is now sending out a one flip it back up it will send out a zero now the way to think of logic in this game is like a water pipe this diode acts as a block or a valve a one directional valve so the logic signal will only move in the direction of the arrow the light it just reads the signal passing through it and admits a color a corresponding to uh, the signal. And your delays uh, are pretty self-explanatory. It's either a 10 second delay and then the logic sin signal will continue. Or it's a 1 second delay and then the logic signal will continue. This flipper. What's the actual name for it? Flipper. Yeah, flip flop hook the flip-flop hook does not care what logic signal you give it it only cares about what logic signal it last produced you give it a signal of any kind and it will produce the opposite of the previous signal produced meaning it will send a one and then a zero, and so on and so forth, every time it gets a signal. And then you have the display. It just displays what logic signal is passing through the cable it is attached to. And then we have these three. What these three do is they count something, and then they send the corresponding number through the system. Uh, for the weight reader, it looks at the weight of everything that has passed by, for the item counter, it looks at how many things have passed by 
as of right now, I do not believe it is selective about what it is counting. And then the durability reader just reads the durability of whatever's in front of it, if there's a durability to read. And then we have this hook right here. And as far as I'm concerned, this hook, the flip hook, is the holy grail to how I made my machines work. This is similar to an equals to or greater than without being able to control the comparison. Now, let's go take a look at my actual smelter and I will do my best to explain my understanding of how it functions. First, I have screens set up at critical points so that I can reset any counters as needed. Second, I have screens in strategic places so that I can monitor the signal being sent out. Third, anywhere I have a connection, I mark the flow of logic. Fourth, I have these magnets in place so that when the machine is triggered, it pulls the resources off the belt to prevent as much loss as possible. Fifth, my reset signal is separated out of the machine and is independently triggered by this sensor here. What you see before you are the must-haves for this system to work. Now for what's actually here, you have four diodes, three readers, one one second delay, one flipper, one comparison, which is an equals to or greater than. You have four magnets, three T's, three keypads, two weight readers, and then one smelter. The machine that you actually use is interchangeable because they all turn on and off with the same signals. Now let's build one together so you can see step by step how it works. The first thing you need to decide is what is going to be my determining factor for triggering your machine. Personally, I went with the weight reader because with the new recipes in Ice Helm, you need a specific weight in your bars in order to make your machines. On top of this weight reader, you need a T. On this T, you are going to put a keypad, a straight piece of cable, and a diode pointed to the sensor. This will stop accidental triggering or accidental resetting of your system when you do a manual reset. Then coming out of the back of the sensor, you go into your argument and make sure your sensor is connected to the A side of the argument. And then connected to the B side, you have a straight piece with a panel, a display panel on it, and a keypad feeding into it. This is the part that allows you to decide what this number needs to equal or be bigger than, greater than, in order for a one to be sent out of this argument. Now, there is some important things to discuss in terms of what number to put in here, but I will discuss that at the end of the video. Next, you have your cable coming out of your logic gate. Personally, I recommend putting a reader on here so that you can check to make sure your system is working properly and that you are getting the one coming out of here when you want it to come out of here. For the record, this elbow connection here does not need to be here. I am just trying to give myself space so that the tutorial doesn't become a mess. Next, you want to connect the signal coming out of the argument into a T. On this T, you're going to have at least one connector that is straight with a diode on it pointing in to the T. 
like so. Again, this elbow does not need to be here. And in fact, many elbows and straight pieces are at your discretion, depending on the layout of your base. We will come back to why this is here in a moment. Next, you are going to connect this T to all of the machines you want activated by your one signal out of the logic gate. Okay, and with that, my magnets and my smelter are connected to the activate signal, which will be sent out when these numbers agree with each other at the appropriate time. Now, the intention of these magnets are to catch resources before they fall on the floor. I have added a one second delay here so that when the reset signal is sent through the system, the auto smelter has time to close before all the collected resources fall into it. Now let's talk reset signals. Personally, I have gone with the weight reader. You can use the item counter if that is your preference. First. You want to put a T on top. This is where the reset signal will go in, and that I will explain when we get there. Then you want to then you want a keypad for that manual reset. You're going to put a diode on this T as well, so that you don't accidentally reset the entire system if you have to manually reset this sensor. You are then going to come out of the back of the sensor. And this is where you're going to put your logic flip hook. And now you want a T connected to your flip hook. Once you have your T connected, you can then connect it to the other T's you put in your system earlier. They are already protected from a feedback loop from the diodes you attached when you attached the T's the first time. You can add as many straight pieces and elbows as you want. To this system, it will not cause a problem. Just make sure that you are able to understand what signal is going where and how to reset it if something goes wrong. Now, before you start dumping your raw resources into the auto smelter, you should run a test on the machine to make sure it is working properly. You do this by triggering the system via the sensor, letting the machines activate, and then triggering the reset sensor. Your test has been successful if all of your sensors are reading zero again and if the smelter is closed. Come back for my next video where I discuss some of the things I learned that are going to be useful in developing new systems with logic. If you liked your stay, please like and subscribe. I, this has been T4. See you next time.